make a decision to follow you. Lord, today I desire for you to be my Lord and Savior. And Lord, help me to serve you from this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I said it just a few moments ago that I would encourage some dialogue and some questions. And I, I really feel that we need to be encouraging one another and strengthening one another. And I, uh, I really felt led in my spirit that after today we would, we would open it up for some questions or maybe something you learned today that you didn't know before or uh, just something. Would anybody like to ask a question? Welcome to Community Close-Up. I'm your host, Sharon Skelly, and our guest today is May Ip. Uh, welcome, May. Oh, thank you for having me, Sharon. It's nice to be in person. I again. know. <laughs> After all this time, now we're finally in person. We're yeah. not in my bedroom at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're not in your kitchen. Um, and uh, May is representing the Local Immigration Partnership Outreach Program, and May is the Partnership Outreach Specialist for Gray County. Mm -hmm. That's quite a title. Yeah, so my title is Gray Bruce Local Immigration Partnership <laughs> Outreach Specialist, and we, in short form, is GB Lib Outreach Specialist. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I've known May, uh, in full disclosure, for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it makes us sound old, but we're really not old. <laughs> uh, I've known you for about 25 years, actually, when you think about it. Yeah. Uh, I first met May when May was uh, working at the Amabel Sobel Child Care Center in Sobel Beach. Her children were um, students there and mm -hmm. my son was a student there and May would play the guitar and, and do things at the child care center. So May's all, always done things to help out in the community and lo and behold here she is still doing things in the community. <laughs> and you're still doing music and still, do you still do your dance? Yes, actually, we we um, we started up again uh, this summer, and but right now because uh, all my dancers are are seniors, so th we're not comfortable going indoor yet. Mm -hmm. So um, last year and this year we we're, we're doing outdoor until it's too cold to dance <laughs> outside, <Yes. laughs> and then um, we'll figure out what happens. <laughs> oh, I should say it's folk dance. Yes, it, it's international folk dance. That's right. Yeah, y you can do. You have so many talents, <laughs> and then you do your origami. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I I really you do miss those doing workshops. That. Yeah. You can often see. Well, you did that um, at Summerfolk. Yes, one year I did that at workshop at Summerfolk, yeah. and you've done that at various um, festivals around the area. So, gee, you you really are a talented person. Yeah. But what you've really poured your heart into and worked at is helping uh, newcomers to the area, newcomers to Canada, but especially newcomers to Gray Bruce, mm -hmm. um, Gray County, especially, um, and with um, <clears throat> with this particular agency um, you've been doing formal work mm -hmm. um, with Gray County so can you tell me a little bit about what this particular partnership does now I was reading a bit about it online and it does do work with the community with the newcomers mm -hmm. and um, it helps them settle in the area, but it also helps the community to help them settle in the area, and it does education too. Yeah. So you do a lot. So give us a little idea about what this 
this um, outreach does. Yeah, and that's why I'm not the only person on the team. <laughs> that's right. It's it, it's a it's a whole it's a group. Yes. So. Um, Actually, Grey Bruce Local Immigration Partnership is a joint venture between Grey, Bru Grey and Bruce County. It's just that we are our office is in in um, in Owen Sound. So so we we were when we started to, in 2020, we set up the office in in the Grey County building, and last week we moved over to Sydenham campus. So. Sydenham campus. That is the um, Sydenham Community School. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So that is that is a, a great county um, property now. So, so um, we are our office is there, but as a outreach specialist, I basically go all throughout Great Bruce when where, whenever there's a meeting and and community events. So, a local immigration partnership is a is a program funded by the IRCC. And right now, all throughout Canada, there are 81 uh, local immigration partnerships. And Gray, the Great Bruce Local Immigration Partnership, GBLIP, is the 81st one. So we're the, the latest one, that's the, that's the newest one, um, that started right in the middle of the pandemic. Wow. <laughs> so it was a challenging thing to do at the time for the, for the team members. And I only just joined um, them as the outreach specialist um, in June this year. Uh, but before that, I was, like you said, I, I, I've done projects with United Way and Welcoming Communities um, to, to support the community mm -hmm. to build capacity to support newcomers. So Local Immigration Partnership is a program that, that kind of like um, uh, a recommend recommended by a, a study. Um, I I didn't do a homework, so I can't tell you how long ago is that. But it was a professor in Western University um, uh, who did a study with her students on um, how to make um, a community more welcoming for newcomers. Mm -hmm. So in that <coughs> in that study, that the report identified twelve a uh, seventeen. Uh, characteristics of a welcoming community. So based on that, um, the IRCC um, um, put out a call for proposal to, to form these local immigration partnerships in which all the stakeholders throughout the, a certain region will come together and collab work collaboratively or coordinate with each other and figure out ways to to support newcomers. So in other words, local immigration partnership does not do direct service to newcomers. We, we bring together stakeholders, we support stakeholders, and we also sometimes we, we will host events too, but, but to, to, um, to create an environment to eventually make it welcoming to new, for newcomers. Okay. So, yeah. so <coughs> you were a newcomer at one point mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a while ago. Yeah. Um, how are we doing compared to when you came to Canada? It's changed a lot. So I immigrated in 1995, and, um, and then shortly after I met my husband, who is, who is not an immigrant, so who, um, we came up to Sabo Beach, mm -hmm. and that's how I met you yes. and your son. And he hasn't really changed much, except that he's <laughs> much bigger now. <laughs> yes, and has a beard. Yeah. Um, uh, now, back then, there was no uh, um, newcomer services up here, right? Yeah. And, and for me, I have a social work background, and as a social worker back home, I always very being, I was very, very, very proud of myself being resourceful, being able to find things when I need w mm -hmm. for, to, to meet my needs. But it was hard when you don't when you come to a new new um, country I guess uh, you you don't know how the systems work you don't know the organizations what organizations are around so so in the 20 in the 27 years we really see change uh, things changing especially in the past I would say in the past 10 years because um, we see more um, newcomers coming and before there were there were newcomers too but they they didn't stay because there's no infrastructure to support them. So um, in 2000, uh, so so apart from so I was a stay-at-home mom and I like you know right? mm -hmm. I and I I I, I volunteers in the community and in schools trying to to promote um, multiculturalism and and inclusion mm -hmm. and 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 then eventually in 2009 2018 um, the welcoming communities and. Uh, and United Way of Bruce Gray got, received a, fund, uh, a fed, uh, provincial funding to do a research and development projects 
on how to support refugees and vulnerable newcomers. And, and since then, <coughs> I've, been, I've been in official roles to, to support newcomers. And, and that was the beginning of, <coughs> of having more, um, I guess, um, putting more efforts to bring together stakeholders and, and working towards um, a, a support network for the newcomers. Now, at this, in the same year that when we get the, we get the um, Gray and Bruce counties get the funding, the RCC funding for the uh, uh, LIP program, uh, YMCA also received a funding from IRCC to start the Gray Bruce Settlements and Language Services program, and I, I believe you have uh, talked to Sunita about yes, that. Yes, we have. Yeah, so they work directly with newcomers, and we work indirectly. It's almost like we provide that, so they, 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 they um, so we're working hand in hand, so that we we provide the, the like the the all round support for the whole community, so that people can integrate socially and economically. And then they will stay. Mm -hmm, exactly. Because as you said before, if the supports aren't here, they will leave. Yeah, exactly. We want people to stay. I think a multicultural community is an enriched community, mm -hmm. and we're only better off for it. Yes. Yeah. But, um, you know, if, if the, as you say, if the supports aren't there, the people will just get frustrated, mm -hmm. and they'll go where they are, yeah. where the supports are. Yeah. or. They may not. The supports may not be there, but there may be more communities of yes. of of, of um, their own people of their own yes. ethnicity and, yeah. and sociocultural yeah. communities, and they'll go back yeah. to where they can find that support. Yeah, people exactly. that will help them with daycare and mm -hmm. job searches, and mm -hmm. you know that sort of support that they need. Yeah, you know, language and mm -hmm. um, English mm -hmm. as a second language and that sort of thing. Yeah, but they'll start to find that here now. Yeah. 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 Whether they'll stay or not <laughs> is another question. We'll see that. Won't, yeah. We won't see that for another few years. Mm -hmm. But at least now we have more tools to ov overcome some of the barriers. So then they they will have an alternative, right? So it's it, before, even if they wanted to stay, they can't because the barriers are too too That's much, right. right? Yeah. Are you getting any feedback from newcomers? Um, from newcomers about our program. Mm -hmm. um, so because, like I said, we don't work directly with newcomers, so, so it's, it's really, um, I, we don't really hear any feedback from them. But from, from, um, from the, the stakeholders that who we work with, I think it's, it's um, the fact that they keep coming back to our council, our uh, quarterly meeting and working groups, I think it's, it shows that there, there is really the need and the passion there. And everybody really wanted to make things happen so that we can we can support each other mm -hmm. and, and, and help the newcomers to stay. Now, a big part of the other programs that you worked with um, and projects <laughs> you worked with was volunteers. Mm -hmm. How can people in this community help to make the the newcomer experience a more positive one? What can we do? If, is there need for volunteers mm -hmm. that you know of? Mm -hmm. um, so our pro at this point, um, uh, GBLIP, the program itself, because of the nature, we don't really need volunteers in the sense that we don't have volunteers go out to mm -hmm. do work. However, we are looking for um, newcomers to sit at our subcommittee. And and, uh, and our council, mm -hmm. and we actually have a in our five-year strategic plan. You know, we mm -hmm. like to plan. <laughs> One of the things that we hope to achieve is to is to form a, a newcomer advisory committee, which is um, which com which will will be which will be made up of all immigrants or newcomers. So it doesn't have to be say say if I were not. Uh, a, a staff members, even though I have been here for 26 years, I could be I right. could be in the advisory committee because we want to we want to bring people who have immigrant experience mm -hmm. into that that um, advisory committee, so that they can be the voice at our council uh, the GBLIP council table. Mm -hmm. So the way that the GBLIP work is that um, so we have like I said before we have I'm not the only person we actually as is a team of three. So I'm the I'm the special uh, the the Awish specialist, and then we have Deepika Gupta. Gupta, she is the coordinator, and then we we 
we had um, uh, uh, Tracy Stratnet. Stratnet. I, I hope I got her last name correct. <laughs> um, she's the communication specialist. So, so the three of us worked together as a team to to support the com these different stakeholders. That include um, uh, organization, uh, so social service organization, economic development, um, educational institute. Um, um, the health industry, mm -hmm. so, so mental and physical health, and, and it, it's just basically anything you can think of, a person, not, not just a newcomer, a person living in a community will need the kind of support that they will need, then we will have the organizations come on board, we invite the organization to come on board to form the GBLIF Council. So the GBLIF Council uh, meets, meets ever, uh, quarterly, so four times a year, and at the beginning of the of the GBLIP program, um, we hired a, a consultant to consult with stakeholders throughout Grey Bruce and and develop a strategic plan, a five year strategic plan that includes um, 22, 23 objectives that GBLIP wanted to achieve together with the stakeholders. And then um, the GBLIP Council. Um, within the council, we have um, three subcommittee, the belong subcommittee, community subcommittee, and the employment subcommittee. So each of the subcommittee board is, they're actually more like a working group because these are the, the groups that will look at the, the objectives that, that were listed in our strategic plan and decide, so which could the, each group will decide, well, so what are the objectives we want to work on? And then they will, they will develop some action plan um, to, to, to achieve those ob objectives. So um, we have, and of course we, we, hope, we hope to have more uh, newcomers' voices on mm -hmm. at the table because we, we, we want to know the first-hand experience. So, so right now we do have the well, Women's Collective, I don't know if you know, know no. about. So Great Bruce, Lo Great Bruce Newcomer and Immigrants Women's a a Collective is, is and, uh, one of my other things that I do. <laughs> In your spare time, <laughs> it, yes, yes, exactly. In my spare time, yeah. so so they uh, they are part of the community, the Great Bruce Local Immigration Counts Council to Partnership Council as well. But we we do hope to have more newcomers' voices so that when we when we talk when in the subcommittee when we talk about um, work, what 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 can we do as a as a as a group to promote and foster integrations. So a, a very good example is the, uh, is the Belong Subcommittee. So um, uh, uh, Chandra Tripathi from King Carden, who was the founder of the King Carden Multicultural Festival. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she, he, so you have heard of that, right? Yes. So, um, and they, 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 could, they had to stop the two, past two years because of the pandemic, right? So. So then earlier this year, um, we reached out, Deepika reached out to, to Chandra and, and um, talked to her, him about the uh, local immigration partnership. And then he brought the idea to, to the, uh, lo the Belong Subcommittee that, the, that, that the, he wanted to organize a um, Hindu culture open day in King Carden. Um, it's to, to, to focus on, instead of multiculturalism, to focus on just one specific culture, just as a something for for mm -hmm. like to coming to like come back to to do in person things so so he he himself is an immigrant so so now he's the voice he has a voice on at the at the uh, council at the GBLIP council table right and and in the through the working group the by Bi Bi belongs of committee we he worked together with different um organized members from organized uh, that represent different organizations to to make that happen and um, the Hindu Cultures Festival actually we, it took place in the middle of August um, a, a, on a Saturday on the 13th I think 13th of August and originally we were expecting like 250 but 400 people wow. showed up. Yeah, and it was it was it was great. So so that that's that's the kind of um, I think the the joint effort of of um, stakeholders to make things right. happen so that. So then when we see in an event like that, you will see um, long time residents and you also see newcomers who come and, and that's how we, we create that belongingness. Yes, and yeah. everybody working together to make yeah. that happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is, that is great. So when you talk about newcomers now, um, are you seeing a lot of people coming from the Ukraine? 
Yeah, so, so we have, um, we recently, as you know, because of the, of the war that started in February, um, we have, and, and this is amazing, since I, since I, as soon as I, I got came to my position as the outreach specialist, I found out different, different groups in, in different communities throughout regions of the region are organizing um, how to bring newcomers, uh, Ukrainian families, uh, to, to the area. So in Great Highlands, there is the Great County Cares, and in Durham, there is, there is a group as well. And um, I know that uh, in um, Southport, there is another, the church. Uh, um, there is a church that is, that, that is uh, the, the doing great things and is have supporting newcomers. But in addition to the different, com uh, and also, of course, in o Owen Sound, there is the Ukrainian village of Owen Sound. And uh, and so so the, there's a lot of effort in in helping more like organized efforts in helping Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian families to come and settlement service in response they they also have some some services to to help and I think because IRCC responds very quickly and put and and put forward a lot of support so that settlement service will be uh, were able to help them and and our role is to to let the community know what are the resources, where to get in touch with people. Um, and also, um, we have also developed a, a host, vet, host vetting process based on the OCASI's. Um, OCASI's has a, has a now what is questionnaire. Now, what is that Ontario settlement and some citizen, uh, something rather is is about settlement services. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, so uh, because um, we we also have in addition to the organized groups, community groups who are who are bringing newcomers here, we also we also notice that a lot of individual f residents and families are are trying to help as well in bringing people here. So, so we, we, wanted to we want to support them by developing a vetting process so that the host will understand so, so when, they, when, they, they, when they have, say, a basement or an apartment that they can, they can offer for, an, uh, for a family to, to live in temporarily or long term, right. then the, the vetting process will help them understand so what are the setup that you need to the basic set, set up in the in the, the requirements that you need in yeah. order to host a yeah. family to to make it a safe mm -hmm. place for fire them to requirements safety requirements yeah. all of those sorts of things yeah. so, windows mm -hmm. all the fire safety requirements things like um, fire extinguishers mm -hmm. there has to be a window if it's a basement w bedroom that yeah. sort of thing yeah because it's um, a lot of people are not did not really think through that, right? So, so you, I guess, like by common sense, you say, okay, this this place is safe enough. But then sometimes when you look at the the questionnaires, you go, oh yeah, I can do a bit more, right? Yeah, they do mm -hmm. the same thing. Um, I've hosted international students before, and they come in mm -hmm. and they check your house and say, oh, yes, you're fine for yeah. that. But they're very, very well. They want to know that mm -hmm. if you're going to bring in someone that they're going to be safe, exactly. uh, they need exits, they need, yeah. they want them to be safe and comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's, I think that is, a, that is a situation with the Ukrainian newcomers, so both the uh, settlement services and, and GB Lib are, are, are here to support whoever needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, have you had any people from Pakistan asked to um, come because of the flooding? Mm, no, GPL hasn't received any mm. any requests. Um, again, because we don't, we're not direct service, so they probably will not find us first. Mm -hmm. They probably will find settlement service first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, now that with climate change and all of yeah. these events, you know, climate refugees are mm -hmm. another consideration and that's an example yeah a perfect example of what we have to look forward to yeah. in the future yeah but I, I think I think really um, the the government has learned the, so before the Ukrainian uh, war broke out um, there's the Afghan Afghans mm -hmm. coming because of the war 
but the response was quick, but not quick enough, right? So then, especially up here in the rural region, um, we have, I, I, I understand that in Port Agu, there's a, a, a group of citizens who brought a, a group of Afghan um, refugees up to, to the region. But eventually, they had to send them back to, to, to the big city because all the paperwork needs to be done there. But now, with the Ukrainian crisis, the, the IRCC responded really quickly. Mm -hmm. And now, the settlement service can actually do all the work here mm -hmm. to, to provide that support so, yeah. so people don't have to move again. Yeah. It has to be done the proper way. Mm -hmm. um, and it can, I think with, um, with COVID, we learned that things can be done differently. Mm -hmm. Even though COVID was not a very positive experience, we did learn to do things differently. Yeah. And uh, become some more things, flexible, I think. Yeah, say. some things yeah. came became yeah. positive out of it, like yeah. flexibility as far yeah. as the way we do work mm -hmm. and how we manage paperwork mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, meetings. Yes. So yeah. we can do some meetings, don't have to all be done in person. Yeah. So we can arrange things for people over you know zoom mm -hmm. so we don't have to do you know for meetings for people that are newcomers could possibly be done yeah. by zoom instead of making them go mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and meetings for health reasons are now a lot of them are done by yeah. zoom yeah where they were often had to be done in person yeah. not everything has to be done in person yeah and even for for us the local immigration partnerships a for our subcom subcommittee because we meet um, six times a year, so every two two months we meet and we do work, and and the stakeholders are all throughout Great Bruce. So it is hard to you save a lot of time. Say so for somebody to come here from Walkerton, it's an hour and forty five yes. minutes to come. So you you're talking about three hours traveling and come for a one hour meeting. That's right. And and uh, if you ha happen regularly, it makes it very hard to to engage. Um, stakeholders who are farther from us. That's right. Yeah. And weather mm -hmm. isn't always predictable. And you have to, you know, oh, I can't come because it's snowing. Oh, well, no, now you can. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can, yeah. you don't have to cancel those meetings and yeah. rearrange them all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, anticipate, and I anticipate that the, wind, the attendance of mid meetings in the winter will actually go up <laughs> because I think of so. that. Yeah. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, one of the, I was reading on your website, um, you want to um, foster a welcoming and inclusive communities. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's happening here? That mm -hmm. we're becoming welcoming and inclusive? Yes, I, I will say yes, but. <laughs> but we have work to do. What we still have work yes, to I do. Yes, I think we do have work um, to do. I think the work really starts from the, the foundations mm -hmm. because we still have, um, um, I think we still have to uh, understand our own unconscious bias. Yes. So that is one thing, and to develop empathy. Yes. Because sometimes when you have not experienced what other people experience, it's very hard for some people to understand, like the the difficulty yes. that they they. Yes, I, yes, we hear those stories. Mm -hmm. You know, well, why don't they just? Yeah. Well, why don't you just? Or yeah. why have you ever? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you've never experienced that. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Put yourself in their shoes. But people are curious. People are wanting to learn, which is really, really nice. And um, but and for that for that reason, and we actually GBLIP, uh one of the my pet project. <laughs> the project that I'm 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 looking after is called Train the Trainers Project. So so um, what happened is that um, we we have recruited eleven local residents all throughout Great Bruce. Um, we call them local 11. And they, they started in March uh, working with a, a consultants from uh, Pillar non Nonprofits. They have a, they have a, a consultancy, consultants um, um, department that work on um, helping um, different organizations understand uh, discriminations and racism and things like that. So, so they, the consultants started working with um, our local 11, and I'm the, I'm the middle person, like I'm the facilitator and oversee the project. And the you're program. going to help them with uh, t training other people. Exactly. Well, well May, thank